patients with heart failure with low ejection fraction less than 40% have got very good medicines to treat the heart failure but there is a group of people who have got a electrical conduction system problem that is leading to the low ejection fraction that is there is a muscular system as well as an electrical system in the heart if the electrical system is leading to a weak muscle then the treatment has to be targeted towards the electrical system of the heart so in a normal heart how does the circulation or the electrical circuit go the electrical circuit starts in the upper chambers of the heart traverses through the upper two chambers of the heart that is they are called the atria reaches the junction between the upper and the lower chamber that is the atrioventricular junction from there it passes down and activates the left sided ventricle or the left sided lower chamber first followed by the right sided lower chamber or the right ventricle later so this is the normal sequence of the electrical conduction of the heart as you can see in the picture but what happens in a left bundle branch block in a left bundle branch block the problem is in the electrical circuit of the heart the impulses originate normally in the upper chambers pass through the junction between the atrium and the ventricle and the impulses cannot travel to the left ventricle initially because there is a delayed conduction on the left bundle so the impulse instead of traveling to the left first goes to the right then goes on to the left so what happens is the electrical circuit instead of going in the normal direction travels in an opposite direction when the electrical circuit and thus the activation and the contraction of the heart happens in a direction opposite to the normal route that leads to a reduced pumping ability of the heart so this loss of synchrony is called as dyssynchronous ventricular activation dyssynchronous means whenever in a uh, musical uh, concert you will say there is a synchrony between the various instruments between the various notes that synchrony is also similarly present in the heart which chamber first which chamber second which chamber third if that synchrony is lost that is called as the dyssynchrony of the heart and the therapy which restores the synchrony is called as cardiac resynchronization therapy and because we achieve this with the aid of a pacemaker that is why we call it as cardiac resynchronization therapy pacemaker what do we do in this cardiac resynchronization therapy pacemaker this is a innovation called as the CRTP in this CRTP we put three leads one in the upper chamber that is in the right atrium one in the lower chamber that is the right ventricle the third in the left ventricle so these three leads we put and we modulate the electrical activation of the heart with the presence of a computer and we can adjust the delay and the sequence of passage of the electrical impulse from chamber a to b to c or a c b like that we can adjust the electrical circuit direction so and the delay between the chamber so we will be able to achieve an efficient contraction of the heart because we get the left ventricle to activate it earlier compared to the right ventricle which is the normal way how a natural heart beats now by restoring the ventricular contraction of the heart what is that we are going to achieve if for example let us say a heart patient with a low ejection fraction and ecg showing left ventricle branch block and an ejection fraction of 30% once we put a cardiac resynchronization therapy we usually expect a 30 to 40% improvement that means the ejection fraction will get better from 30 to 40% or even 42% ejection fraction improvement we can expect by putting the cardiac resynchronization therapy do all patients respond similar to this pacemaker therapy it we have to determine uh, based upon the ecg criteria the echocardiography criteria past patient medical illness the chamber size the amount of scarring of the myocardium on cardiac mri based on that we can identify and categorize patients into three main groups after the, uh, who are the patients who are going for the pacemaker the first group is the super responder the second group is the responder the third group is the non responder the super responders are the group where we can expect a 30 to 40% improvement in the heart pumping ability whereas 
Responders, we can expect about 20 to 25 percent improvement of the heart function, whereas non responders might not show such a dramatic improvement of the heart pumping. That is the that, so it is very important for us to identify into which group this patient is falling based upon the multimodality, that means multiple ways of imaging ECG, echo, uh, PET CT, cardiac MRI. All these investigations give us the information whether this patient is falling into a responder, super responder, or a non responder category. And based upon which, before performing the procedure, we can have an idea how much improvement in the ejection fraction we can anticipate. What are the complications of the cardiac resynchronization therapy? The cardiac resynchronization therapy, despite being an excellent advance, like any surgical procedure, it has got a 1 to 2 percent risk of. Uh, having a procedure related or a device related infection. So these infections are going to be a big nuisance and sometimes life risking. So all and aseptic precautions should be employed and at most diligence should be uh, ex exercised by the treating team to achieve a zero infection rate. That's number one. Number two is the other risk is for example, patients who uh, get a unindicated a patient they will not no, they might not get the best response so they might in fact be a non-responder but still get a pacemaker the ejection fraction improvement might not be there the third thing what we have to understand is despite getting the cardiac resynchronization pacemaker they need to continue lifelong medication as we have already known pacing targets the electrical system of the heart drugs target the muscular system of the heart we need to use, target both the system of the heart to strengthen the heart and bring the best possible outcome from the CRTP therapy. How, uh, despite being such a common therapy, why it is not being used? Uh, heart failure and LBB, it is a very common problem in those patients. But unfortunately, the therapy is evolving and the clinicians are also still not aware of which patient is a responder, which patient is a not responder. So the ad advising for this therapy is not up to the mark what we have to see. What are the advances in CRTP therapy? Previously, we used to put three pacemaker leads, right atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle. But now, over the last couple of years to three years, we have a new modality of pacing called as the left bundle branch uh, area pacing or, or what we call as the cardiac physiological pacing or uh, if so in this entity instead of putting three leads we put two leads one in the right atrium another in the left bundle branch area pacing so that we can get a normal physiological contraction of the heart as you can see in the picture so that gives the best possible contraction small studies have shown that this modality of pacing is even superior to the three leads of pacing or the cardiac traditional cardiac resynchronization therapy pacing which has been done even now also. Thank you.